Max, uh, he values his life total a lot, so goes for the jump block. Finds a Grim Har specs there off the top of his deck. He's probably looking at like, I wish this Husk was still on the battlefield. Yeah, and he actually misses his land drop here as well, so it's just Husk go for Dore. And uh, Pascal Maynard, like you said, kind of moving things forward. So I don't think that Pascal has found the Zulaport cutthroat yet. That means that if he... F or does he have one in hand? He might have one. One way or another, if he wants to go for the combo kill with Rally the Ancestors, he, well, does need a Zulaport cutthroat to get uh, the, the drain triggers from sacrificing his board or at least the creatures that he is going to return with the Rally the Ancestors. On the other hand, even if he doesn't have a Zulaport cutthroat yet, he can probably uh, find a lot of uh, cards with Catacomb Sifter and the, uh, the Grim Harris specs in order to find the required copies of Zulaport Cutthroat. That is how the, how the deck typically operates. Yeah, it's not that difficult um, after the first rally to find the second rally, right. which, which is typically lethal at that point. Now you can take a look at our back table as well. For those of you who have been uh, hanging out with us all day, we've got two of our three undefeated players sitting there. That's Reed Duke on the right, and that's Jake Mandelo, his, uh, his opponent. And we already saw Reed Duke in the previous round showcasing his Esper control uh, list. Jake is actually on a super interesting deck as well. He's playing red-green Eldrazi with a lot of ramp cards, three copies of Ulamog, Ceaseless Hunger. Oh, yeah. And he's playing for uh, for the undefeated spot, so ramp strategies may be the real deal in standard after all. Yeah, we will find out at least how they did on day one here shortly. We'll be jumping over on that match as well to check things out. Though this one has seemed to slow down a little bit here as Pascal kind of carefully works his way through this board state. Yeah, the Husk is such a good attacker in this deck. It's pretty much impossible to block it profitably uh, but at the same time uh, you have to start blocking it uh, quite early on because it can present lethal so quickly all right no blocks this time looks like he's just gonna get in for four then yeah well he Pascal didn't have lethal yet mm -hmm. So down to 17 goes Max Doré. Mm. And he's still stuck on three mana here. It looks like he's found a Nissa, though. And that'll help him get another land drop going. Oh, nope. sorry, not a Nissa. Excuse me. A Liliana. <laughs> it's always, always a surprise what you get with these uh, yeah, Planeswalker I I checklist I cards. Known. Yeah. Earlier today, I also thought that a Jace uh, was going to come down. It turned out to be Liliana as well. <laughs> Yeah, no, that was my bad. He he he's he's only playing really honest. So mm. yeah, he doesn't have blue for uh, for Jace. What what happens here though, on Lil with Liliana? Well, if Max wants to, he can flip it immediately by just sacrificing any creature to the Natuka House. Okay. Um, but after that, well, Max can immediately get back get the emissary. Uh, yeah, something like that. Minus to get back the emissary. Possibly set up some chum blocks for the Natuko Husk on the next turns. That might be reasonable. You could also tick up Liliana. But that doesn't really give you much of an edge. Because well, it is unlikely to go ultimate uh, mm. in this game when Pascal still has so many creatures uh, on the board. Yeah, I, I might be okay with attacking here with the Husk. That's always uh, fine. It's not lethal yet I don't think especially because Pascal can also sacrifice some creatures on his side of the board to get some Zulaport cutthroat triggers of his own um, but yeah attack with the husk deal a bunch of uh, damage and then sacrifice the manifest in order to transform the Liliana yeah, that's what he did it ended up being a, an emissary that was turned face down I'm sure he would have had to have <laughs> loved to have enough mana to uh, 
<laughs> just turn that guy face up and get a little extra value. But unfortunately, he's really been crimped on mana, stuck on three for multiple turns in a row here, so he doesn't have that luxury. Mm. He's going to flip up Liliana, though. And the husk just got in for four, it looks like. So I did see another Zulaport cutthroat in Marcus Dove's hand. Mm. If that guy comes down on the next turn, that husk is almost certainly going to be uh, lethal. Yes. And well, Max essentially only needs, in a way, like to sacrifice eight creatures to drain out Pascal from uh, from sixteen. Now Pascal can of, can of course respond to that by sacrificing some creatures of his own. So and get his own cutthroat to kind of counteract. Yeah, it's, it's not in complete lethal range yet, but uh, these Zulaport cutthroats can lead to kills out of nowhere. Let's see, so what can Pascal do here? He may not have found the second white mana for the Rally the Ancestors that he has in his hand. So that means that he may just want to be attacking and attacking Liliana, perhaps, in order to deny Max some additional uh, advantages down the road. The Jace is also not really doing all that much, it looks like, because there is no... Uh, instant or sorcery in Pascal's uh, graveyard to flashback. Yeah, it can keep ticking up, which is okay, but it doesn't have a huge impact on the board, or at least not as big as in some of the Jeskai decks, for instance. Yeah, you mentioned it. I, it feels like you'd almost have preferred just to keep Jason, in, <laughs> you know, looter mode mm. a bit longer. Ooh, Pascal. Ooh, he I has I a I rally, but only one white source? No, I, I think he had another Canopy Vista in hand. Oh. If, if my glance at his hand was uh, was correct. That's interesting. Is this potentially lethal then? Interesting. So Pascal hasn't played that Canopy Vista yet. He doesn't want to give Mux the information that he might be able to cast Rally the Ancestors this turn. Attacking with a bunch of creatures, he doesn't mind if he loses any of them because they're just going to come back for at least for a turn with Rally the Ancestors. Assume the zombie is going to jump in front of the scion here. And that's a relatively free block from Max's perspective, right? Yeah, well, you give Pascal a trigger from the Zulaport Cutthroat, but that still seems better than. Yeah. The trigger he well, can have leave, 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 leaving the scion him. around. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so uh, he actually didn't block it. That is one brave little scion. He got right in there past the zombie. Interesting. Yes, sometimes against this sacrifice deck, you don't want to uh, uh, block creatures in order to deny your opponent some of the sacrifice triggers. But, well, in this case, the Eldrazi sign can just be sacrificed at any time at will. So that doesn't seem to uh, help Max all that much. Now, there is the, the Canopy Vista that you spotted in Pascal's hand, and he's played it now, so Max knows what can happen. Although he's also found his own Canopy Vista here, mm. though it doesn't seem to do a whole lot uh, for his hand. So what we might be seeing here, because Pascal doesn't have lethal yet with that Rally the Ancestors, he can uh, put back a couple of creatures uh, and get some Zulaport Cutthroat triggers, but it won't be lethal yet. What Pascal may be able to do is cast Rally the Ancestors, or first sacrifice some of his boards to get some, some triggers and get those uh, Catacomb Sifters and whatnot into the graveyard. Cast Valley the Ancestors, get everything back, sacrifice everything to the, everything to the husk, you get a bunch of triggers, and then, um, like, scry possibly another Rally to the top of his deck with Catacomb Sifter, mm -hmm. and try to win the game with the second Rally. And repeat. Yeah, but now there's also a second Zulaport Cutthroat, which yes. could get Max up to... Well, a lot of life into the into the thirties. Possibly yeah. taking out that rally into rally game plan that I just described. Wow, this is a crazy matchup. <laughs> it is. Now remember, both of these players are like Pascal's. Let me double check my notes here. Yeah, it looks like they're both on eighteen. So. We should make that show. He's not Pascal's not six zero and two from what I see here. He he's six and two. I mentioned that at the beginning, but we'll get it sorted here. Um, anyway, both players, of course, are playing for day two here. Uh, this is mm -hmm. 
This is their tournament. The loser of this is going to have to come back tomorrow and do some drafts or some Super Sunday or you know something like that. Where the winner gets to see if they can take this rally deck to the top eight. We've had around 800 players here. There probably will be you know, next two and one or somewhere in that range we'll, we'll get into the top eight. Mm. So it looked like the Nantuko Husk attacked Jace. Down to two loyalty. Um, the interesting thing of doing that is that uh, it doesn't put Jace into the graveyard where it could uh, be returned via Rally the Ancestors. Okay. But at the same time, if Pascal would play, say, Collected Company this turn, then Jace is at only two loyalty, so it cannot flash back the Collected Company okay. yet. And it looks like Pascal's trying to decide how he wants to block the Husk here. No, I think the, the Husk already decreased the loyalty on Jace. Oh, so no, you're right. combat must be over. Yeah, yeah, you're, I'm sorry. So, so what is uh, Pascal up to here? Is he just sacking a bunch of stuff to Husk, to his own Husk? Probably with the Rally of the an rally the Ancestors in hand, if he indeed wants to go for the line that I described to set up a bunch of Catacomb Sifter triggers, then, well, this is the moment. Note that the... Nantuko Husk on Max's side of the board wouldn't have been lethal, even though there are two Zillaport Cutthroat uh, out. If Max would have gone for that and sacrificed his entire board, gone all in, he would have lost pretty much instantly to uh, Rally the Ancestors, which would gain Pascal a bunch of additional life uh, so that the Husk attack wouldn't be lethal. Mm. And then Max's sacrifice his entire board doesn't have anything anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that's off the table. But here is the rally. So what's going to happen now, Frank? All right, so all creatures in the graveyard are going to come back, at least for, for a turn. You have to uh, exile them at the beginning of your next upkeep, at least the ones that are still around then. And I'm sure that none of them will stay around to be exiled. They'll just be sacrificed uh, in response to that trigger in the upkeep. The Catacomb Sifters already give you two Eldrazi Scion tokens. And now there's also a Sedisi's Fateful, which, um, well, can do all kinds of things. So it looks like he's going to sack Sedisi's Fateful to itself. Let's see what he returns. Yeah, you could return, for instance, one of the Catacomb Sifters that you uh, got into play at end of turn via the Reality Ancestors. Mm -hmm. That way you are able to replay the Catacomb Sifter. It doesn't get exiled that way. Yeah, you can also just bounce a creature on Max's side of the board to uh, reduce his board presence. That's what Pascal chooses. Bounce the 1-1, um, one one yeah, mm -hmm. which now it's is sacrificed in response. Mm -hmm. It's a manifest. Um, a note that the Rally the Ancestors was exiled as a part of it uh, dissolving, so it cannot be flashed back with Jace on the next turn. And these are the scries from the yep. catacomb sifters that we see there. So what Pascal may be looking for here is, well, first up, another Rally the Ancestors. And I guess that's pretty much it. You can just scry towards one card, leave that on top. You only get to set up one draw step. Although that's not completely true, <laughs> because you can set up one draw step, and then with... Now we're in the upkeep. There is a Rally the Ancestors trigger on the stack, which says, well, exile everything that you just returned. Pascal can now uh, draw a card uh, with Jace, a good one that he left on top, such mm -hmm. as, well, hopefully Rally the Ancestors. Then sacrifice the rest of his creatures, get a bunch of additional scry triggers, find Zulaport Cutthroat number two mm. with those, and then play Zulaport Cutthroat, play the second Rally, and that will be lethal at that point. Awesome. So let's see if he can put it together. This has been pretty cool. Looks like he just sacked Jace there. Scry. Scry. So he's digging, looking for a rally. Yeah, so I'm imagining that the Jace... Ooh, we found Collected Company. Is still on the stack. Okay. Yep. So that loot just resolved. He yes. got rid of the windswept teeth, but that did allow him to find this collected company now. This is pretty cool. 
This, this deck is Dex, complicated. This deck's crazy. All, all the triggers, and note that there's still the Rally the Ancestors uh, trigger on the stack. There's still Pascal's upkeep. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he's, he's responding to that with Collected Company. So if he finds the, Z the Zulaport Cutthroat now, that will be good. Or he maybe or not. maybe he could found have found a um, Grim Harrowspex to get some yeah, more value. Yeah, he didn't find that either. He found no. another Husk. He found a Jace. He found a uh, Elvish Visionary. Yeah, those are his choices. Fine as well. Then we may get the, the same trick once more with like a Visionary entering the battlefield, a card draw on the stack, you sacrifice a bunch of creatures in response, get a bunch of scry triggers, set up your draw steps, <laughs> resolve the trigger from the Visionary. Yeah, you're right. That's what he's doing. Uh, he didn't sacrifice anything in response to the to Oh, the you're card right. Draw. No, he didn't. He just drew a card. Yeah, he could have uh, the improved the, the card quality of that, uh, that card draw by just sacrificing some of the creatures that would be exiled otherwise. I mean, they're all going away anyway, right? Yeah, this deck is just one big puzzle. Uh, it looks like Pascal he, also he went to in heaven. <laughs> yeah, he has like he has <laughs> his hands in his head, in his hair. It's like, <laughs> what do I do now? What, what triggers are still on the stack? What's going on here? Uh, I need to find another oh, rally. Where, where is this Zulaport cutthroat? Oh, boy. All right, more scries are happening. Bottom, bottom. Well, Pascal certainly needs to sacrifice those catacomb sifters that came back. Otherwise, they get exiled. There's, there's no point in doing that. And he wants to, yeah, this makes sense, sacrifice some additional creatures like the Eldrazi Scion before sacrificing the Catacomb Sifters in order to maximize the number of Sky Triggers that he mm. gets access to. Because he's getting two triggers per, right? Two Scry ones. Mm. Thanks to having the double Sifter. All right, another one bites the dust here. And you yeah. see the life totals are slowly switching back the other yeah, direction. Yeah, all the while, like, getting these triggers from the Zulaport uh, Cutthroat. There's a Scry. There's the other scry, and you can see he knows what he wants. He's just shifting most of these cards down mm -hmm. to the bottom. I mean, any time a creature dies, there go there. There's three triggers that go in the stack: one Zulaport Cutthroat, two Catacomb Sifters. If you play this deck on Magic Online, the the entire screen will be filled with triggers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I was picturing <laughs> yeah. earlier. Oh, did he find something he likes? No, not good enough. Go to the bottom. Thinking about this one. Oh, well, we might have a keeper here. No. No, he's done with that one, too. Like, if Pascal had already found a Rally the Ancestors, um, then given the, the two white mana that he has untapped and the colorless mana that he is generating by sacrificing these uh, Eldrazi Scions, would have allowed him to play uh, Rally the Ancestors, well, currently in his upkeep, but I don't think he has found that rally. If also, he how does he get it into his hand lethal. from here? Well, if he would have found it with uh, either the... The visionary the, trigger? Yeah, the visionary trigger mainly, yeah. Yeah, but he decided to just peel a card from that, right? Which, and then which may have been a mistake, yeah. because if he indeed would have uh, responded to that by sacrificing a bunch of cards and setting up the, the triggers from the scry such that you dig towards the rally, he would have been able to cast it right there and probably, uh -oh. probably win the game. He put it on top of his library, this last one. Well, I mean, at some point, you have he, to he keep it. He, he doesn't have many creatures around, so... Yeah, well, he found something he likes. There's also a big husk, of course. And then he's finally going to take his draw step here. I think these six and four might indicate the number of creatures that have been sacrificed to Antuko Husk 1 and Antuko Husk 2, perhaps. Okay. Indicating that these are currently huge and that... Max will have to block them. It was, by the way, a rally that he finally found. He's got it in okay. his hand right now. Yeah, but he drew it in his draw step yes. at a point in time where the mana that he got from the Eldrazi Science Correct. was already gone. Yep, and he had already used the other four to cast Collected Company, so he's mm -hmm. going to have to wait a turn. But in the meantime, a pretty productive turn there for Pascal. He's, his graveyard's all loaded up and ready to go. He gets to attack with this husk that was huge. He's not realistically under threat of death here, right? I, 
be pretty tough for him to lose from this position this turn. And he's got a rally in his hand. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, an bad. it's an interesting definition of uh, a productive turn. I think he started uh, well at the end of Max's turn with <laughs> three creatures in play. <laughs> he, he took a lot of time setting up his draw, sacrificing stuff, getting 20 triggers. And now there's still three creatures on a battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe he's just spinning his wheels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you might be right. Yeah, I think we need some some epic sex guy music uh, playing the <laughs> saxophone. Like, just yeah, we're we're doing not really something productive, but we were having fun, sacrificing something here, drawing yeah. some cards, crying a bit, some triggers here. But to be fair, it it was productive in the sense of filling his graveyard, which will likely make the rally the ancestors that he found after all that crying lethal on the next turn. If Max doesn't kill him with his own rally, that is. Yeah, Max, if he would have found his second white and would have rallied the ancestors in hand, along with the two Zulaport cutthroats that he has between his board and graveyard, might actually be able to set up uh, lethal here, but Max does not have access to either of those cards. Right, so it looks like he's going to go for a collected company here instead. Fair enough. If Max finds two Zulaport Cutthroats, no, that's still not going to be lethal. Quite. In uh, maybe maybe Zulaport Cutthroat and Catacomb Sifter. Then sacrificing the Scion to play the Cutthroat in his hand. Oh, close enough. Ana Fenza. Whoa. Yeah, that's a one-off in his deck. Jeez, and that only affects the other player, right? Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, it, it may be... No, it, it's... Is it too late? No, the the the... Cards, the creatures that are in Pascal's graveyard, stay there. So if Pascal yes. plays Rally the Ancestors, they'll uh, still come back. They'll all come back. Okay. Now Anafenza will stay on the battlefield, and it means that uh, any creatures that would die instead get exiled. Okay. And that also means that all of the creatures that trigger whenever the creature dies, like Catacomb Sifter or Zulaport Cutthroat, do not trigger. So the, the question here is, does Pascal still have a Sidisi's Fateful in his graveyard? He because, does. Because then he can actually bounce <laughs> the Ana Fenza and still combo off. Oh, that's crazy. And he does. He's got one. I can see it. Well, that should do it then. <laughs> wow, he'll be happy he has that what, in his list. What a matchup. What a crazy matchup this <laughs> is. Welcome to game one. Yeah, game one only. Yeah. Uh, af after game two, uh, after we move to the sideboard, Max has two additional copies of Anafenza in the sideboard. If he can put out an Anafenza early on, maybe on turn three, mm -hmm. that could uh, play a huge role because imagine that Max would have had a turn three Anafenza this game. Oh, yeah. Then all, all these scry and sacrifice shenanigans that uh, Pascal was pulling off wouldn't really do anything. They would just get uh, negated by the Anafenza. But now it is probably just too late. Yeah, Pascal has that rally in his hand, and he is ready to rumble here. Max is tapped out currently. I mean, I imagine this is lethal, but... You haven't ran the numbers yet? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> It is a lot of counting with this deck, and when, like, if Pascal has two Zulaport Cutthroats, it's all certainly lethal. But I think he only has uh, one Zulaport Cutthroat yet. Mm. On the other hand, um, does he have. No, if there is there an Elvish Visionary in his graveyard? Yes. So yes. What, what he can do is play Rally the Ancestors for three, leaving up. Let's say two mana. Mm -hmm. um, then put all the creatures on the battlefield. Sidisi's Fateful takes care of Anafenza. You have to resolve that, that one first while the Visionary Trigger is still on the stack. Then, with the Visionary Trigger still on the stack, you sacrifice a bunch of creatures, get all the Catacomb Sifter triggers, dig your way towards the second Zulaport Cutthroat, and, well, after drawing the card, you just play it, and then kill, then kill Max, everything that, else. that should make it lethal. Okay, well, here we go. <laughs> now, you talked about filling the screen with triggers here, I and mean, we've got cards filling the screen, and each one of them is bringing in a whole bunch of things that rallies, obviously, mm. exiled. Oh, thank you, Pascal. And uh, 
Yeah. This should be game, right? Look at all this stuff. Almost certainly. Right. So right now Pascal's describing how he wants the, st the triggers. Yeah, so you have to, to put be stacked up. Elvish visionary on the stack. Um, oh. Oh, he just peeled. Oh. Well, I was gonna say you should put the Elvish visionary on the stack first, such that it resolves last, and then the Sadis is faithful on the stack last, such that it resolves first. Um, he, he, I think he drew Grim Hara specs. That's also nice. I mean, he but does have a well couple of Eldrazi Scions floating here too, right? Yeah, he, he, he's going to get those with the Catacomb Sifter. Yeah. So that Grim Hara specs will probably also allow him to, to win the game from here, assuming he can still play a land this turn. Right. Because after resolving all the Enters the Battlefield triggers from the creatures that he got back, he can then uh, cast Grim Hara specs just by sacrificing two Eldrazi Scions, then sacrifice a bunch of his creatures, start to draw cards in the meantime, and scrying, of course, so he finds the second Zulaport Cutthroat pretty quickly, and then just play land, Zulaport Cutthroat, and win the game that way. This is assuming that he didn't play land this turn yet. Yeah, I don't think he has. I don't think, but... Ah, I could be wrong, actually. Didn't he play that Flooded Strand this, this turn? I actually think he did. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, it was... <laughs> there, there, there's so much going ago. on in this game. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the one thing that I uh, didn't keep track of uh, yet. It is interesting, though, because it's because Pascal just hasn't been leveraging the scry ability from the Catacomb Sifters to set up that crucial draw that he has on the stack. He, he hasn't been doing that. He's been taking a different route where he's like, eh, I'll just draw a card. Mm. Is this an attack here? It is. Okay. Get that out of the way now. Yeah, I'm not sure I like the attack here because Pascal could have just indeed like played the Grim Harris packs beforehand, right? And gotten some additional value out of the creatures that he is uh, sacrificing. And assuming that he hasn't played the land yet, if he had played the Grim Harris packs beforehand, he could have also drawn into Sadisi's Fateful rather than the Zulaport Cutthroat in order to bounce one of Max's two blockers in order to set up well, a lethal Natuka house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially since Max is completely tapped out here, so he's working with good information. Yeah, and that yes. works really well together too, right? Because every one that you sack to the husk is making it bigger, which you're going to do anyway for lethal. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, well, let's see if Pascal can put together a victory here. He still looks like he has the tools to do it. I mean, clearly he's way ahead on board. You can see that just at a glance. Yeah, certainly. <coughs> um, this deck looks hard to play. My goodness. Yeah, uh, Pascal has been playing it all day. <laughs> Maybe also getting a bit tired uh, near mm. the end of the day. Because I imagine if I would be playing this deck, um, like for... Uh, Maybe he had three buys, so for, for six rounds already, then... By trying to remember all the all the triggers in all the games, trying to figure out how this deck is even uh, trying to work, it's a lot of mental energy that you are uh, exerting. Maybe it's also taking uh, its toll on Pascal near the end of the day. Could be. Yeah, he's got to make sure he keeps the pace up here too, though. We we are still in game one. Yes. You know, and uh, you know. You have to leave the door open for potentially a three-game match here. Mm -hmm. So he's got to get moving with this stuff. It looks like he's going to sack both of the uh, Scions and to set up casting that Grim Horror Specs. Yep. And the big question will be, has he played a land this turn already? Yeah, and I'm pretty sure he did. I think the Flooded Strand came out, came out mm -hmm. of his hand this turn. I think he went from 14 to 13 on that. It sets his life totals changed around a bit. But All right. All right. Pascal's just going to say go. I mean, he has developed a, a pretty nice board state here. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that he can set up lethal on the next turn uh, as well. Cause now, well, is this dangerous, though? Like, what if Max goes white source rally here? Is that... It might be dangerous. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's happening for what it's worth. Oh, but... The Max is going to replay the, the unoffensive. Yeah, he just replays it. And now Pascal can respond to that by getting all the all the triggers from all the creatures that he still has around. So he's got to do it now. Yep. 
And if Pascal finds another Rally the Ancestors, which is likely with, I don't know how many triggers he's gonna get, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's able to actually sift through his entire deck if, if need be. Like any time he sacrifices a creature, he gets to scry twice, two, twice yeah. and then draw a card. So that's uh, a lot of cards seen per creature sacrificed. So it is extremely likely that Pascal will be able to find another Rally the Ancestors on the next turn and do it all over again. And he will have also found the second Zulaport Cutthroat around that time to set up Lethal, finally. Yeah, Pascal plays four rallies. His opponent, Max Doré, uh, plays three. Mm. And it's great to see these uh, rally decks um, in action. Although the mirror match is a bit of a, this a is bit of a mess against uh, <laughs> it's crazy like to a, watch on a Fenza and everything that's uh, that's going on. Yeah, but it's nice that such a deck is available in standard as well. I think this rally deck will have a, a great matchup against the the green white decks uh, that we've seen, for instance, or uh, like green white mega morph, but also banned tokens which don't really run a lot of um, relevant interactive pieces. This By the way, he found a rally. Just yeah, I wanted well. to update you. The, you're, you're almost for certain came through. <laughs> yeah. I didn't run the numbers, but the probability <laughs> was uh, <laughs> probably 98%. Right. 0.9. These rally decks are not going to be all that great if the metagame is filled with Abzan because Anna Fenza is... She's well, a problem. She, she just shuts down the entire deck, essentially. Um, may also not be great against uh, blue decks with a lot of uh, counter magic to dispel or disdainful stroke your key rally the ancestors. But against these clean white decks, for instance, this deck should have a great matchup. All right, now Pascal is fully in business here. He's got the rally. Got a bunch of creatures in his hand he can play, at least some of those. And his, his graveyard is reasonably stocked as well. So I would expect to see Pascal win this turn. Same here. Gonna, we're just going to see the same thing as in the, the last turn, essentially. Yeah, I, I kind of hope he wins this turn. <laughs> not I mean, that I'm rooting for him over Max. It's just I, th <laughs> I, think, I, think, the, I think the kill is on board almost. Yeah. By bouncing the Anafenza and then Max is only at 12. No Zulaport cut road yet on Max's side of the board, so Max cannot gain any life. And I'm sure that Pascal can assemble 12 creatures to to set up the kill. Well, this is taking about 40 minutes. <laughs> Right. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> All right. And here I was talking about post sideboard games with more offense on. Yes. Well, that should make it quicker, right? Yes. <laughs> if we can't do this. Yeah, Pascal may have to watch out not to deck himself because I do think that the Grim Harrowsback's trigger is mandatory. But oh. he can just sacrifice it as, uh, as the first creature. Such that that wouldn't be a big risk. Yeah, you are correct that it's uh, that it's mandatory, Frank. Go, Pascal. Max has been tapped out most of the game and just kind of has been watching. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's hung right in there. It's just his mana problems early really stumbled him up. I mean, he had a board with you know, four or five creatures, two of them being, being Zulaport cutthroats, and uh, just couldn't quite get over the hump as far as mana. Yeah. Well, the, the kill is not lethal yet on board. Pascal doesn't have enough creatures to drain Max for 12. Could probably drain him down to two life or something. But Pascal can just play, well, some more creatures from his hand in order to, uh, to finish the job. Right. It should do it. And if he can find that second cutthroat, yeah, then it's, it's just going to be done, a bit right? easier. Yeah. yeah, for sure. See if he finds it. See, he's got a collected company in his hand as well. Maybe he'll just go digging for it with one of those. All right, 
it. He found it. That's Zulaport. Cutthroat, he's just going to show him this and say, I'll play it and sack my team. All yep. right, we did it. We made Got a game there. of magic. Pascal Maynard wins game one, and I, I don't know how they're going to finish this match. Yeah, there, there's less than 10 minutes remaining. Like, a, as an example, <laughs> Reed Duke with that super slow control <laughs> deck, he's long gone. Yeah, he won 2-0 against the, the Eldrazi Ram deck, so Reed Duke is undefeated with his Esper control deck. Congratulations yeah. to him. Congrats, Reed. But, yeah, it's, it's impressive that his almost no-win condition <laughs> deck finished <laughs> not, not, not just the game, but the match before Pascal Maynard was <laughs> able to combo <laughs> off with his uh, Rally the Ancestors concoction. <laughs> oh, standard. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've also got in our mm -hmm. feature match area uh, Seth Manfield and he he is undefeated currently he's playing somebody who's not undefeated though we already got the got the result actually yeah I see it I was just uh, we're not gonna okay well we oh. can we can spoil it go ahead oh. Frank Seth Manfield world champion he won. He is undefeated, also 9-0. and So our two undefeateds overnight are Reed Duke and Seth Manfield. Yeah, so that's hmm. uh, Esper Control and Dark Jeskai. Awesome stuff. And so great job to both of those two guys. Now, we're in a different world down here, though. Pascal Maynard versus Max DeRay is to see who even gets to come back tomorrow. Now, the, the, the undefeated players, they're going to come back and put together a run. We're going to see plenty of them tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But one of these two gentlemen is going to have to head home and not get to come back and play in the GP tomorrow. Maybe maybe some side events or something. But tall order here. I mean, you know, you, you want to fight. And sometimes you don't get off to the best start. You need to string it together. Sometimes you have a really good deck that can, that can get you there and uh, mm -hmm. see how it goes for these two. We also had a final match in the feature match area. Uh, two undefeated players as well. Uh, Omar Beldam as well as uh, Dan Lancier both entered the round at 8-0. Oh, oh th this round? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought that uh, we only had three undefeated players. I must have misread. Okay, well, how did that go? Well, turns out that Belden won. Okay. He also moves to uh, a 9-0 record. Now, undefeated. I'm assuming that those are, our, are all of our undefeated. Does that sound right to you? That we had 800 players. Makes ish. sense. Um, we would ha is, is having three what we would expect? E yes. Well, Trying to run the numbers, but that's pretty <laughs> difficult due to all the buys. <laughs> and Come uh, on, Frank. What are we paying you the big bucks <laughs> for, buddy? <laughs> we flew you over from <laughs> Europe. <laughs> three sounds right to me. You didn't bring the numbers with you? <laughs> yeah. Three ish. I'll settle for three ish. All right, we're underway in game number two. Let's see if we can't uh, get a clean win here from one of these players. Yeah, so there's approximately eight minutes and 30 seconds remaining for the players to finish the match. And Max has to win two games in order to win the match. So they have to speed it up. Now Max does look to have a great opening hand with a turn three on a Fenza potentially. Ooh. That is what we, uh, what we talked about. He had one in his main deck and two in his sideboard. Excellent card in this matchup because it just shuts down all the all the triggers from creatures dying and also prevents Pascal from filling his graveyard for Rally the Ancestors. I imagine that Pascal boarded in a couple of answers to Anafenza, especially after seeing it in the first game already. Mm -hmm. Pascal has uh, four copies of Murderous Cut in his sideboard and I have to imagine that some of them have been uh, moved into his deck for the, for the second game. All right, there's a Zulaport, Zulaport Cutthroat to start things off for Pascal. So typically slow start, but here we go. Anafenza has arrived, and even an attack here for Visionary. So Pascal's going to go down to 19, and Anafenza is going to be ever-present here, and Pascal's going to have to find a way to work around that card if he's going to want to uh, you know, try to go off with some mm -hmm. big, big Yeah, turn. and it doesn't look like... Oh, no, Pascal does have a murderous cut. Which in his can, hand, okay. Which he can cast this turn already, thanks to uh, his fetch land, so that should help. But apart from that, Pascal doesn't have a lot going on yet. I think I saw Sidisi's Fateful in his hand, which doesn't really do all that much by itself. And no 
no big cards to turn on his combo. I didn't see a Jace. I didn't see an Antuko Husk. No collected company. So we may be a long time off of Pascal assembling any anything that resembles a kill. Yeah, he's going to get in there for one with his uh, cutthroat after taking down Anafenza. I wonder if Max has a replacement on Anafenza, maybe? No, it doesn't look no. like he does. <coughs> yeah, he does have an Antuko Husk, which can... Uh, present a quick clock, especially given the Zulaport cutthroat that Max also has in hand. He's going to go for a silk wrap here on the cutthroat. And he's even got a cutthroat of his own, and now Rumble. All right, so nice sequences here for, for Max. He's been able to use up all of his mana from turn two onward here, and he's kept Pascal kind of off balance a little bit, killed one of his creatures, made made him deal with Anafenza, and, and Max is, you know, incrementally ahead here. Fair enough. This this line at least allowed him to use all the mana that he had available, mm -hmm. so it may be better than Nantuko Husk for that reason. But I kind of like playing the Nantuko Husk there in order to increase the clock and win quickly, especially uh, when he's under so much uh, oh time no. pressure. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. And also, if Max had waited on the Silk Rep, he might have wanted to uh, exile Jace instead of the Zulaport Cutthroat. Of course, the cutthroat is a key piece of the combo, and you're happy to get rid of it. Mm. But it looked like Pascal had a hand with not a lot of action. And exiling Jace in such a situation can be huge, because you deny Pascal the, the card selection. But hey, Max got that Superboard cutthroat out of here. It's going to get in for a damage here. And it looks like Grim Harspex is actually going to be... Oh no, I lied. He is going to play Husk and Emissary with Horror left in his hand. So mm. things actually shaping up pretty cleanly here for Max. Yep. He's got everything he needs. He needs to find a rally, but... So is the Husk already lethal? If Max plays his Grim Horror on the next turn mm. and sacrifices Two, Visionary, three, four, Emissary, creatures? the uh, Manifest from Two. there, you have the Grim Horror it's, it's lethal. Each of them add like plus three effectively. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you sacrifice yeah, the remaining Zulaport Cutthroat yeah. and the two from Nantuka Husk. It, it adds up to lethal. It is lethal. Yeah, so Pascal will have to present a blocker or a removal spell for the Nantuka Husk on the next turn, or he's dead. Well, there's a, an Elvish Visionary. He's also got a Catacomb Sifter and a Sadisi's Faithful, yeah. so he, he will Ch be able Chum to. Jump blockers for days. Yeah, he can kind of keep, mm. keep Max off of. Uh, killing him here but max is you know getting close and and the uh uh the uh what's his name the grim horror specs is going to help fuel max as well get him to find some of those great pieces that's true and pascal doesn't seem to have an answer to that yet so yeah sure you can present a bunch of jump blockers for the husk to make sure that you don't die immediately um and it's also nice that Jace may flip on the next turn, such that you can flash back to Murderous Cut. But that Grim Harrow spec threatens to draw a lot of cards for Max, getting Max closer to maybe another Zulaport Cutthroat for the kill. Yeah. Uh, a Rally the Ancestors, kind of the same deal. Maybe another Anafenza to prevent Pascal from comboing out. So, so far Max is heavily in the lead this game. But he may be relying on drawing some good cards off of that Grim Harris Pax. If he breaks, then Pascal, with the tools that he has available to him, may be able to, to get back. Uh, CDC's Faithful is going to bounce the Husk. Mm -hmm. But Max is going to respond here by sacrificing the uh, Sultai Emissary. All right. Gets a cutthroat trigger off of the deal. Yeah, and now if Max doesn't draw a six land, uh, then he cannot cast both the Tuko Husk and the Grim Harris Packs on the next turn. He can only cast one of them, which means that the transformed Jace from Pascal, or at least he's gonna transform <coughs> on the next turn, mm -hmm. can uh, flashback Murderous Cut to kill whichever one of the two creatures Max plays on the on the next turn, and thereby break up the combo of Husk plus Harris Packs mm. being in play at the same time. That's yeah, tough. He drew a Liliana. for the turn, so just another three drop. And, and like you said, mm -hmm. he, he not hitting that land drop, he, he is, uh, can only just cast one creature. 
So now all of a sudden it looks like Pascal's the one who may be making day two here if he can keep this line up. Finds a land. Oops. Gets rid of a land. Jace flips. Is he just going to go for the murderous cut on the husk right now? I would think so. Just get that thing off the table. Yeah, it, that play is so good against well, both of the cards that Max is holding, Liliana as well as Grim Harris packs. Just uh, taking that sack out. Having, yeah, having a sack outlet in play is so important in this matchup that you want to deny the opponent the opportunity of having that. That husk, get it out of there. Let's see if Pascal agrees. I can even follow it up with another Jace to keep on the, the looting. Hmm. No, he doesn't. He leaves the husk in play. Wow. Just ticks up the Jace. Risky business. Maybe Pascal is afraid of Max playing an Anafenza on the next turn. Like another one. And then he wants to have the Murderous Cut in his graveyard as an answer to that. But this looks like it's turn one here. I believe that's what we've got here. So, yeah, this is a little unfortunate, Frank. By the way, Anafenza off the top. <laughs> Speak <laughs> of the devil. You called it. <laughs> <laughs> But this is just going to be tough because now Max is just fighting to try to get a draw out of the deal. Yeah, so the way it works is, I mean, there's just five more turns. If Pascal doesn't uh, lose th this game in any of those turns, then he will win the match 1-0. So given that Pascal is in no rush in order to f close out the game with a win, he just needs to, well, stay alive. Yeah. And it's going to be tough. I mean, now Liliana's here, and she can get transformed right away, and he can even bring back on offensive if he'd like, right? Mm -hmm. And Max has this turn and then two more turns in order to uh, deal 15 damage to Pascal. Okay, he's going to sacrifice the Elvish Visionary. Train you for one. Let's get Liliana into... Transform mode. Ma mad mode. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. She's angry. So the way that Max can win this game yeah. is probably not with just a bunch of Nantuko Husk attacks because Pascal has more than enough jump blockers. It is likely going to involve a lot of Zulaport Cutthroat triggers. Right. Uh, draining his way to victory. Um, and possibly rally the ancestors to, to help out with that. So the way that Max can win this game is if he maximizes the amount of cards drawn perhaps on the next turn with Grimhar Respects in order to find a second Zulaport Cutthroat or a Rally the Ancestors. And given that, perhaps it's even worth it to like minus two Liliana, get back the Elvish Visionary. And he does go for Anafenza, which I'm, I'm sure would be the correct play if there would be more than enough time in the uh, in the round, perhaps it's still correct because it insulates Max from Pascal uh, potentially comboing off with with some rally shenanigans over the course of the next few turns. But Max has to get the win here. He can't just yes. prevent Pascal from doing things. So this is going to be tough for him. Also, also, like you, also you you cannot get yeah. Anafenza back because it's it a legend. legendary. Yeah, right, you can only get non-legendary creatures back with Liliana. Yeah, yeah, I thought about that when I said it yep. before. Mm. So now what? He's just going to get back the visionary instead. Probably, like Do ticking something. up Liliana doesn't really uh, accomplish anything. And oh, as like I mentioned, you you do it. need to find your way towards well having enough creatures on the battlefield or. Uh, another Zulaport Cutthroat in order to drain out Pascal from uh, from 13. He goes for the Sultai Emissary instead, uh, preferring to get well even eventually another Manifest rather than just a card with uh, Elvish Visionary. And there's the Husk attacking, which is clearly lethal. Pascal has to block it with anything. But he's he had plenty of any things. Yeah, like, like he can easily <coughs> block with uh, Elvish Visionary, no problem. And remember that Pascal still has that murderous cut in his graveyard. So if he so desires, Pascal can just flash it back, get that Nantuka Husk out of here. And that will also allow Pascal to um, 
will negate the possibility of Max going off with Grim Hyrospex on the next turn. Well, as it turned out, Pascal blocked with the Elvish Visionary. The Husk was an 0-2 yep. due to the Jace activation. And mm, damage well, happened. Yeah, nothing <laughs> happened. Maybe he should have double blocked or blocked with the Sifter. <laughs> yeah. He had to at least force Max to sacrifice something uh, to yeah. it. Couldn't be that wouldn't worst. be unreasonable while there's only one rather than two Zulaport Cutthroats around. Yeah. Okay, so this is turn two out of five. Yeah, if I were in Pascal's spot here, I would go for the flashbacked murderous cut on the, on the Natuka Husk. You can't really attack the Liliana, so that Planeswalker will have to stay around. It looks like the players are discussing something. It's getting very animated down there, but <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what they're talking about. Pascal. Here comes the cut. Yep. Afterwards, Pascal can also draw a card with Jace to get closer to, well, a relevant piece of interaction. Uh, I think he also drew this spell. Pascal has an answer to a potential Rally the Ancestors from Max, yeah, which is relevant. That's pretty nice. Yep. All right, well, here we go. He finally is going to murder his cut, and he's targeting the husk. But it looks like the husk is going to go do some work here for sacrificing a Sultai Emissary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this way if Max finds uh, a Zulaport Cutthroat on top of his deck, he has it as a manifest and can unmorph it. That way get it into relevant status. And now the husk is dead. Max is left with Anafenza and Grim Hyrospex in his hand, but no husk anymore to sacrifice his board. Also, Pascal will have to dispel up against the, the Rally the Ancestors. So the way that uh, Max can still potentially win this game is by casting Nantuko Husk on the next turn, uh, which he has to draw. Then on turn five, the very final turn of this uh, match, cast Grim Harrowspex, start sacrificing a bunch of your creatures, find another Zulaport Cutthroat, and then drain out Pascal from there. That is a line I can still imagine, but... Takes a pretty good imagination, though. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, a nice way of saying uh, uh, it's uh, a really small chance. Okay, Anafenza shows up again. Max is at 21, Pascal's at 12, there's the Grim Horror Specs, but as you mentioned, the engine's turned off. Mm -hmm. Make both players discard. Actually, Liliana can take down to get back to Nantuka Husk that's still in the graveyard. Okay, uh, okay. And that, that would be on turn five? Yes. Okay. And I don't think that Pascal has a good way to uh, interact with Liliana, he just has a bunch of weak okay. creatures in place so he cannot attack it interesting and then Max can start sacrificing a bunch of creatures yeah. if he finds another Zulaport Cutthroat in time he might be able to delete lethal to, to Pascal in that case wow this is actually really interesting because mm. the cool part is is that uh, Liliana doesn't take mana right so yes. he can start sacking stuff draw cards with her specs and actually find and cast things that can matter here mm -hmm. huh okay I'm interested. Or even if he finds some some more, like, f fodder creatures like Blister Pod. Mm. Uh, yeah, you cause that one, get, like, two additional triggers, draw a card. Maybe you find the Catacomb Sifter. That gives you two more tokens. It's possible that you don't even need the second uh, Zulaport Cutthroat if you just find, well, a bunch of creatures on top of your deck. So what can Pascal do in order to prevent that? Well, he... He's got a Sadisi's faithful in his yard. Can he get that back somehow? He might even have two. Yeah. And he has really the ancestors in hand. Okay. Yeah, he's got so the mana for it. Let's see. Start by 
casting that over here and then bouncing the Grim Harris packs. And no, that, that's still not. Right, he's passed the turn back now because remember, he can just sort of interrupt things maybe at instant speed here. But mm -hmm. All right, well, let's see what Max peels. This is turn five. So he needs to win the game this turn. Yep. And then he earns a draw. If he doesn't, the match is over. Was that another Grim Harris specs? I think it was a uh, Sultai Emissary. Ah, okay. Fair enough. So that's essentially two points of drain. Mm -hmm. And that's two cards as well, right? Mm -hmm. The Manifest is not a token, so... True. Business. So if I am Pascal here, I might just play Rally the Ancestors in response to this Liliana targeting the Nantuka Husk in order to bounce, well, at least the Grim Harris specs, because that means that uh, Max has to spend a lot of mana to replay it. And maybe maybe a zombie token or, or something. Or actually the Zillaport Cutthroat, just mm. constrain Max on mana. That, w that would be my play. Uh, just tie up five of his mana. Yeah. That seems good. He's only got four mana available after that uh, emissary. Mm -hmm. He decided to play that first. Is that going to come back and bite him? Like, should he have just activated Liliana and kind of seen what happened? Yeah, I don't think there was a big benefit of doing that beforehand. So it looks like Pascal agrees. Goes for the rally on the double CDs. He's faithful. Yeah, if he bounces Grim Harris Specs as well as the Zulaport Cutthroat, the best that Max can do after the Natuko Husk comes back onto the battlefield, which is still on the stack. Like, replay the uh, Grim Harris Specs, then sacrifice, start sacrificing a bunch of creatures, um, draw a land, play the land, then you have two mana remaining, replay the Zulaport Cutthroat. Yeah, that doesn't do it. I'm not sure Max has a way to get out of it if uh, Pascal indeed just bounces the... Uh, the Grim Harris Pact as well as the Zulaport yeah. Cutthroat. He, he just can't add any more to the board. Yeah, the he best he can do is, is to, uh, replace do this board. Yeah, exactly. Huh. Wow, these Sidisi's Faithfuls have been really good for Pascal. He used them in, a, in game one to uh, bounce on Offensa a couple of times so that he could do mm -hmm. his own rally shenanigans. Yep. <coughs> yeah, looks yeah, like I, he found I that I also line. saw these uh, cards do a lot of work in Christian Colcano's Blue Black Aristocrats uh, sure. version of the deck, which had... Liliana along with uh, Sidisi's Fateful. That way your Liliana can actually do a Jace the Mind Sculptor impression. Just minus one to bounce a guy. Mm. Uh, I like that. Yeah, Pascal that doesn't have that interaction in his deck. He's not playing Liliana. But you know, the cards still buy you time, work well with all the sacrifice triggers, are sweet to return with Rally the Ancestor. So they, yeah. they, they, they look like a draft common, but they are surprisingly important. Did So he actually played the Cutthroat first here? Is that what I'm seeing? Uh, yes, but this is not going to be lethal, I don't no, think. No, and now he can't find more cards. Mm -hmm. So the horror specs is going to stay in his hand. And he has to actually just have lethal here, which he doesn't. Yeah, yeah Pascal is separating the creatures with and without summoning sickness. There are only four creatures that can attack this turn, and Pascal has four blockers. So Yeah, it looks like Pascal has this thing locked up and will be in day two, where Max Doré is going to have to... Uh, He's mm. going to have to come back tomorrow and check out the draft scene or, or maybe enter the Super Sunday series or something. And you can see Pascal kind of explaining, well, I don't know if it particularly matters how I block here. Just no, that I block here. I mean, if the game would go on for some additional turns, then it would be super relevant. But yeah. Yeah, due to the, the timeout. The match is just going to end after this turn. Yeah, we can see that this is turn five. It's that die in the middle mm. as you're presenting. Get a loot going here with Jace just for value. Sure, go to damage. Now, perhaps at this point, Max is asking Pascal to uh, concede because Pascal has been taking a lot of time uh, off the clock. Could be leading to uh, well this 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 timer situation, but I mean Pascal just had a lot of triggers, a lot of things to do in the first game, and he had some pretty complex is, boards. Yeah, it is the the natural result of the match. Yeah, and there we go, Pascal Maynard.
wins the match and sends uh, Max DeRay home packing. So we will be seeing this four-color rally deck tomorrow. 